What we're going to be going over here is governmental accounting, and we're going to be looking at the private purpose trust fund. So when we're talking about our trust funds here, those would fall under our fiduciary funds, and we're going to be specifically looking at the private purpose trust fund here, but we'd also have as part of our fiduciary funds here with investment trust funds, pension trust funds, and also agency funds. So when we're talking about these fiduciary funds, this is where the governmental unit here acts as a trustee or an agent here for for any external individuals, organizations, and so forth for administering these trust funds here. So let's look at this private purpose trust fund. That is a non-expendable trust fund, referred to as a non-expendable trust fund, and we'll get into what that means here. So first off, uh, looking at our characteristics here for a private purpose trust fund, uh, it accepts assets that are invested to produce earnings for a designated external purpose, like scholarships and so forth. All the assets received here or purchased under this private purpose trust fund here are recorded at their fair value. That would be including land and uh, buildings and so forth. And thirdly here, it, the changes in the fair value of these assets here are reported as investment income. And fourthly here, earnings are expendable for the specific purpose, but the principal amount is not expendable. So that's the key here when we're talking about non-expendable trust funds. Any earnings off, this, um, or off the principal amount here uh, can be spent, but the principal itself has to remain intact. And um, really, you must separate between the principal items and the revenue items here. And the common method is to set up two different funds here. So basically what we want to do here is we want to look at uh, separate our principal items here from the revenue or earnings off those principal items. In the principal items here, this is where we have to protect the principal or we have to maintain the principal here intact. We can't spend the principal amount. And then the revenue or the earnings, that's the money that can be spent here. Any earnings off the principal, that is the, that is the amount that can be spent. So looking at uh, we'd, we'd call them an endowment principal fund here versus the endowment earnings fund. So this is what we want to look at. We want to look at two different funds here when we're dealing with these non-expendable trusts, in particular this private purpose trust. So what we would have here, I've got everything laid out in key account or form here so you can get a clear understanding or a better understanding of how these accounts work. So for our principal items, this is where you typically have, and which you, when you're dealing with these uh, uh, government accounts, just concentrate on the title names here and the accounting that goes under those titles. So what we would do for our principal items here, let's just say we'd have some additions and contribution account here for the principal fund and just say there was $200,000 here uh, contrib contributions here. That is the principal amount here and then in our under our principal items or our principal fund here, you want to separate the, uh, print, uh, the uh, principal amount here from any earnings. So this on your earnings here, you're going to have like addition, additions or revenues here. And that's again in our principal fund. And just say for our example here, just basically say we had 15,000 here uh, of revenues that were generated off the principal amount here, 200,000. So debit your additions and your revenues here or your revenues for $15,000. Those are the earnings here. And then when we act, we have to transfer those out here. We're going to transfer those earnings out and they're going to go into the revenue or earnings fund here. And uh, let our revenue and earnings fund here, those would be like additions to inner fund operating transfers. You're going to have some type of account set up as that here. So in this case, we would credit our addition, our revenue account here, additions to revenues for $15,000 for the transfer out here. And then, so that's being transferred out here and it's being transferred into the revenue or earnings fund here. Transfer it in, debit it for $15,000. And that's where the transfer it in. So now you, what's sitting in your earnings fund, This you can distribute these earnings for the intended purpose. So let's just say we would what we were sitting here with a debit amount of 15,000, then when we distribute them here, we uh, credit or reduce our additions to inner fund operating transfers here for $15,000. So key is here, this principal amount here, this is really the, the source of assets or for the earnings fund here. Any 
uh, revenues that are generated off the principal here. That's really the only source of assets to the earnings fund here. Okay, so now let's go up and let's look at just a couple brief examples here. So again, looking at the private purpose uh, trust, that's really an endowment fund here. And uh, you really, we're gonna be looking at the principal trust fund here in the earnings fund here. So just first here, we're gonna we'll go through first just a brief explanation here for the principal fund to say, uh, we received an endowment here for some scholarships and the amount that can, you can spend here, the revenue amount. So just basically what you would have in on your non-expendable trust here, the principal fund, the cash receipts that you have here, uh, debit that here for $100,000. That's the endowed amount here. And then the fund balance for under the principal fund here, you would credit that here for $100,000. The only key I, point we want to make here that this original principal here of $100,000 has to be remained intact. Okay, so now let's go down and let's look at a more complicated example here and how this uh, private purpose trust really works. And again, uh, when you're dealing with these uh, non-expendable trust funds here, they really use normal accrual accounting. So what you want to do in this case, we're going to be looking at a bond purchased here at a premium here, 9% bond, 10-year 10 uh, 10 life here on that bond. And it was just, say it was purchased here by the governmental unit here, and they're setting it up as a private purpose trust where the uh, revenues generated off this bond here can be used, let's just say for scholarships again. So the key point is here, you wanna separate the principal uh, amount here from the revenue or the earnings. So again, I got everything set up here in T account form and there's a lot of accounts to go through here. But the key is here, uh, we're gonna concentrate on the uh, names of these accounts here on, and on our inner fund entries here. And again, what we want to look at here, we're going to look at the case here. I've got our account shown here for the principal fund here, and then moving down over here, this is where I'm going to be showing the earning fund here. So we're going to have some, uh, we're going to make a purchase here of some bonds here, and it's going to be set up uh, such that it's, there's any interest or uh, generated off those bonds are going to be uh, set up such that they can be spent on scholarships say so for example we're going to be in our principal fund we're going to generate some earnings here and then off the, uh, the principal amount here and then those earnings are going to be transferred down into the earnings fund here and then the earnings fund is going to spend whatever earnings the uh, whatever they designate as earnings here uh from the those the the earning earnings that are coming off that off that principal investment here and then they're gonna, they can designate or to spend it as they want, the earnings. But the key is here, we wanna keep the principal intact. So we set up those two different accounts. So let's look at the case here. Say for example, they purchased the bond here. Just say the government had purchased the bond here and they're gonna set it up here as a private purpose trust in, in an endowment here that they have. So uh, cash account here in the principal fund, deb or credit that here for $40,400. Purchased it at a premium here, so they're paying a premium price on it. So, cash credit reduce it for the purchase price forty thousand four hundred. Then you move over and you set up your investments account here again in the principal uh, fund here. Debit that here for forty thousand dollars. That's the principal amount here uh, that must remain intact for that bond purchase. And then it was purchased at a premium here, so you got to set up your M unamortized premium again in your principal fund, debit that here for the difference between the cash paid here and what face value of that bond uh, of for, uh, cash paid of 40,400 less the uh, uh, face value of the bond of 40,000. So debit that here for $400 here, unamortized premium. Okay, so now comes along this first interest payment here and the uh, trust fund here receives a private purpose trust fund receives an interest payment of $3,600. So they debit or increase their cash here for $3,600. And then they have to recognize their revenue since they received the cash, now they recognize the revenue in the principal fund. But the only revenues that they're gonna receive here is because it was purchased at a premium here, we're gonna have to amortize that premium. The unamortized premium, we have that 10 year bond, so we would credit or reduce our unamortized premium here for $40 here. So what 
we recognize as revenues is simply the difference between our cash receipts here at $3,600 and less our credit or reduction here for the premium amount that we have to amortize out. So that's going to give us our revenues here available here that we can transfer out to the earnings fund here, $3,560. Okay, so that is really the revenues here that we recognize. Okay, so now since we have those uh, that interest payment, now we have to set up a liability account here in our principal fund for the amount of those uh, revenues that we received here. And then we're going to have to move, we're set up the liability here, and then we're going to have to move those funds down into the earnings fund here, that amount, that what was available here, the 3560. So moving up to our principal fund here for our liability here, this is where we're going to have the operating transfers out here account. Remember, just look at that, keep those type of titles or account names and account names here, understand those. Again, in our principal fund here, debit that here for $3,560, that the amount of revenues that we have here. And that's really going to be set up as a liability here. So the uh, the credit is going to go to due to the earnings fund because it has it is due to there. It has to be paid out to the earnings fund here. In our principal of fund here, again, credit that here for $3,560. Okay, so we set up our liability here. Now we have to move down to associated entries here for the earnings fund. So what would we do here? We had, we're going to have down in our earnings fund, this is where we're going to have due from the principal fund because that we had due to the earnings fund here in the, in the, in the principal fund. Now in our earnings fund, this is due from the principal fund here. So we're going to debit that here, increase it for $3,560. Those are the earnings that we're getting from the principal fund here. And then the credit is going to go to other financing sources. Again, in our earnings fund here, uh, credit that here for $3,560. So you see a lot of uh, entries here. We had to make that transfer between our principal fund here in our earnings fund. Okay, so now we come along and we actually remit the cash here. We actually are gonna take the cash out of the principal fund here and move it into the earnings fund here. So in our cash account and our principal fund, credit that here for uh, $3,560. $3, That's that amount we can, uh, we received here interest of $3,600, but because of the amortization here of that premium, we only have, uh, we're going to remit the $3,560. That's what we set up as our liability here in the earning of the revenues that we have. So credit or reduce our cash account here in the principal fund here for $3,560. And then moving down to, due to the earnings fund here, we're going to debit that here for $3,560. So we're removing our due to our, our liability here based on that cash payment. So that takes that would be in our principal fund here, then moving down to our earnings fund here. Well, we've got two things here. We've got the cash that we're receiving here from the principal fund, debit that here for $3,560, and then do then moving over to our due from the principal's fund here, credit that here for $3,560. So we balance it, we remove this due from our principal's fund here uh, based on that cash transfer. Okay, so that takes care of the uh, cash that was remitted here. Now let's just say, for example, we actually say the earnings fund here is gonna pay out say $3,000 worth of scholarships from, uh, they determine that there's enough money in here and they're gonna pay out $3,000 in the scholarships here. So in our cash account, in the earnings fund, credit or reduce the payout here for $3,000. And the debit is gonna go to expenditures. Now you can recognize your expenditures here in the earnings fund again. So only upon that cash payout, you recognize your expenditures, debit it here for $3,000. That was the payout amount. Okay, so now we've taken care of that. Now let's say the end of the year comes along here and we're gonna to have to do some closeouts. So what do we have here to close out? We've made our cash remit, uh, cash remission here. And what we have to close out for the year end here, we've gotta go up to our principal fund here again. And the only uh, items that have to be closed out would be that operating transfers out here we would have had a debit here of 3560 end of the year here we're going to credit it here for $3560 so we have our closeout at the end of the year here we have a zero balance here and then 
The other item here in our principal fund would be our revenues amount here. Well, we had that credit of 3560. Now we can debit it out here or reduce our take our revenues and re reduce the balance to zero here by debiting here for $3,560. And then moving down to our earning or our earnings fund here, we have some closeouts here to take care of that. We would have had our other financing sources, we would have had a credit of 3560 so now we have to close that out at the end of here, debit that here for $3,560. And then now we also have our expenditures here in the earnings fund. We had a debit of 3000 here, so now we can credit it out here, close it out at the end of the year here for $3,000. But you can see we've got a, our sources here, we've, we've got an imbalance in our debit our, between our, our other financing sources account. We uh, removed 3,560 here, but our expenditures, we only removed 3,000. We only spent 3,000. So we're gonna actually have, uh, this is where the, you have to figure out your fund balance reserve. This is what's remaining here based on that earnings here. In, and again, in your earnings fund, the fund balance reserve is simply the difference here. Other financing sources, we had uh, a debit here of 3,560, or that's what we received for the year, or for on this example for the year here. Our payout was 3,000. So our credit amount here. So we're going to need another credit here. To what's remaining here between our sources here and our expenditures? Credit close out for the year end here at $560. So that's the remaining fund balance here. So we went through a, quite a number of accounts here, but what you want to do here is you can go back through it here, but concentrate on your interfund entries here and your account names here. So again, we used really basically normal accrual accounting here when you're talking about uh, these non-expendable trust funds. So a lot of different titles here, but just go through it and look at the different entries. All right, so that'll summarize our topic.